Welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a hike. Now in the Phoenix area, a lot of people like to go on hikes, especially in the spring and the winter and in the fall winter times when it's a little cooler. But they'll usually go to South Mountain or they'll go to Camelback Mountain. And those can be a bit challenging uh, to go on those hikes as noted by the many rescues that happens every year on both of those mountains. Now, from the Phoenix area, as you look east, you can see the Superstition Mountains, and they look rough and craggy and very difficult, but they're very beautiful. Well, one of the best hikes you can go on in the valley that's very easy, it's educational, and it really gives you a good opportunity to see some culture, is Hieroglyph Canyon. So it does take a little while to get to Hieroglyph Canyon. We'll show you here on the map uh, the route to get there. Go south on Highway 60, you're going to run into a couple of areas where you can turn off. One will be South Superstition Mountain Road. However, the one that's probably a little better is to go a little further on 60, another approximately a mile to uh, King's Ranch Road. That's a little more of a straight shot and by the time you get to the end of King Ranch Road you'll have signs leading you to the Hieroglyph Canyon parking lot. So let's talk a little bit about hieroglyphs. There's a lot of people will tell you that that canyon has been misnamed, that it shouldn't be Hieroglyph Canyon, it should be Petroglyph Canyon. And <clears throat> Now if you want to take a look at the uh, insert video here that we're going to show you uh, Hank will explain why it's now named Hieroglyph Canyon because a lot of people argue it should be Petroglyph Canyon and technically they're right. Some sources say the name was changed to Hieroglyphic Canyon shortly after the turn of the 20th century. The prolific writer historian Will Robinson in his book History of Arizona referred to Apache Springs as early as 1918. I'm sure the old ranchers knew where the locations were and probably had names of their own for all of them, but there were no formal names back then, not for these cowboys out there in the mountains. Talk about early cowboys, freighters, and other pioneers in the mountains. All of these guys, they knew where they were going, and they had names for the things that they used as landmarks, but they didn't necessarily show up on maps. And other sources say that Apache Springs appeared on maps as late as 1939. I have to say here, as we've seen with so many other topics about the Superstition Mountains, there just is never one version of any story that we're discussing. And the Hieroglyphic Canyon is no different. However, when it comes to talking about who changed the name of the canyon, we do have a few clues as to who may have made the change. Pearl Bates, or William N. King, could have named the canyon during the war years 1941 to 1945. One or the other was probably Pearl Bates, according to Tom Collinborn. And Collinborn knew these people, so I'll, I, I'll take his word on it. He was the one who passed the hieroglyphic name on to Julian King after December of 1945. Whoever the genius was that called the writings on these ancient walls hieroglyphics, I believe did so because it seemed like the thing to do to add intrigue to the desert country around Dinosaur Mountain. Or he simply just didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Unfortunately, whatever the reason, the name change was a complete misnomer, and the misinformation created confusion for our Southwest scholars as well as Egyptologists way back then. Petroglyphs are indigenous to the American Southwest. Hieroglyphics, well, we know where they come from, don't we? Don't we? It just sounds like just one more fiction writer trying to make a buck out there somewhere to me. So now you understand that it was misnamed to Hieroglyph Canyon and why. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between hieroglyphs and petroglyphs because technically these are petroglyphs. 
So a hieroglyph is a writing system uh, using pictorials that actually represent words or phrases. And so it's more like writing a letter or a document that you would write, you know, in what we would call, you know, the English alphabet, if you're writing it today. A petroglyph is not so much of a communication as a statement. And it's not trying to convey anything more than the people were there and they found something that was very valuable to them that they wanted to remember. And so these kind of help them remember things. Now a petroglyph can be uh, part of what they call rock art as a more general or generic item. In rock art, it can be uh, anything from scratches on boulders or little pebbles or cliff walls or uh, caves. The ones in caves are tip typically called uh, petrographs, and those are cave paintings, and that's one that most people are familiar with as seeing cave paintings. A petroglyph is normally referred to as a carving into a living rock. Now, living rocks are not the boulders that you see laying around. They're usually on a cliff face, and they'll typically have a, a black patina or varnish on them. Uh, in some areas, it'll be more reddish. And this is from the bacteria that's on the rock forming the varnish by using the different minerals that's in the air around them, typically iron and manganese. Uh, it takes a long time. It takes a couple of centuries to really get a good patina on and to really get that black face on there. And so when they do the petroglyphs, they have to carve into that. And so it's called carving into living rock. And it's because of the black uh, patina that it's called living rock. So they take and uh, scratch it out, tap it out, um, do a variety of things in order to get past that. And that's why you see the contrast of the black and the light underlying rock in its normal color. And that's what gives it the contrast so you can see these. So just to show you that these are not just random drawings or scratchings that uh, the Native Americans would put into rocks, from uh, the National uh, Park Service, um, from over in the uh, Petroglyph National Monument in New Mexico, they make this very specific statement. They should not be confused with hieroglyphs, which are symbols used to represent words, nor thought of as ancient Indian graffiti. So you're looking at something that has very important, significant cultural um, indications for the Native Americans that camped there. And they were trying to uh, convey something about their culture, something about their tribe, something about them personally. The National Park Service goes on to state that when you look at petroglyphs, know that they were very intentionally put where they are and facing the way they are. So you should look and see what is around them, what they're pointing at, what their uh, angle is, where the horizon is, to see if you can determine what it was that was being uh, indicated by those petroglyphs. Because they're not just random uh, rock carvings. So with that background, uh, we can now better understand why going to Hieroglyph Canyon is a real cultural experience. And because it's an easy hike, it's one that's very worthwhile going to. So once you get to the uh, parking lot there at Hieroglyph Canyon, uh, you'll see easily the trailhead. There's a real nice uh, mural that's there at the opening. Take some time to read it. It kind of gives a little background about the Superstition Mountains and the, the people who took time to actually create the trails going up to Hieroglyph Canyon and uh, Gold Miners Trail. Uh, we aren't going to talk much about Gold Miners Trail except briefly, but it's another trail that goes uh, out of Hieroglyph Canyon parking lot. So there off to the left, you'll see the path that you'll go through to start going up towards the uh, Hieroglyph Canyon. Now as you get up the path a little ways here, you'll notice that you have a fork in the road with a big boulder sitting there. Now, this boulder has rock art on it. This is not a petroglyph, this is rock art. Probably put there by the people who created the trails, because it's a trail indicator. Then you'll also notice that there's a bunch of people who did put graffiti on it. 
Um, not cool, um, but you know, it's the way it is sometimes, unfortunately. So you want to take off to the left, and as you go off to the left, you'll notice you come to a gate. Now that gate uh, is the difference between the state land and the national park, the Superstition National Park. Now that's a wilderness area, and it has different ru rules for being in the wilderness area. So please be respectful of the wilderness rules while you're out there. Now the trail is really pretty nice. It has a gentle upslope uh, that you're gonna go about halfway. Yes, we're on the Hieroglyph Canyon Trail, but we're going to the Petroglyphs. So uh, it'll gently go up and then it'll go down uh, into the Petroglyph area. Now the trail can be hiked with tennis shoes. It's like all Arizona trails. It's gonna be rocky with you know, pebble-sized rocks. It, there'll be areas where you have to kind of step up over some larger rocks and that. But you'll do okay with a pair of tennis shoes. Another hikes in the Superstition Mountains, you really want to have a good set of hiking boots. So as you get to the top of that little ridge and you can start seeing down off to the uh, way you're facing, uh, and maybe a little more off to the left, you'll start seeing where the petroglyphs are going to come into view. It's not real easy to see from that far away, but that's where you're headed. So as you uh, get off towards the uh, petroglyphs, you'll notice there just to the left uh, on the trail, a big kind of volcanic type boulder. Take a moment to look at the top of it and you'll see all six or seven matates where they ground up the seeds and the herbs that they gathered for their food in that area. You notice they're quite deep, and so they've been used a lot, which will tell you that the Indians camped there for many different seasons and for quite a while during each season that they were there. And part of the reason is, is there's a pool of water there that can be available year-round. I mean, I wouldn't drink out of it, but if you have no other source of water, you know, that's better than nothing. Uh, you know, these days you'd purify the water and clean it, and I'm sure they had their ways of dealing with the water as well. So going on past that, um, you'll now drop into an area where it does get a little tricky to get down into where the petroglyphs are. There's some deep, steep drop-offs here, and so just go ahead and uh, pick a an item, just be careful. Um, if you have to go down backwards, whatever it works for you to make sure you're safe as you go down in there. So you'll start heading down towards the pool and then off the, towards the north or the left, you'll start seeing the wall with all the petroglyphs on them. And so here you can see a bunch of the petroglyphs that uh, we uh, viewed while we were there. Now, one of the links, we're going to put links to all of this stuff uh, below this video. One of the links will be a link to a site that has some more generic uh, petroglyphs, not necessarily any you'll find here, but with the translations. By and large, petroglyphs are items that are unique to the individual or to the tribe, and so there's no standard dictionary or any way of translating them in a normal fashion. So this is where you can kind of make up your own story and kind of figure out what story the uh, person was trying to tell when they draw, ground up the rock face, that living rock face, to make their petroglyph. Now look carefully because you'll see that there's just petroglyphs all over the place. They're back in crevices, they're hiding behind other rocks, they're hiding, there's some that are even on the flat surfaces that people walk on. Please don't walk on those. Try and respect them. Some of them have gotten very, very faded because people keep putting their hands on them and getting their oil, skin oils, and uh, they keep walking on them, and so those are fading, unfortunately. So try and be very respectful. But as you go on up the uh, riverbed or the stream bed, and most of the time when you're there, there's not going to be any water in the stream bed. They'll just be the pool. Um, you know, you'll see more and more. Unfortunately, when you get way up uh, past the normal petroglyphs, you will find some people that have decided that they wanted to put some graffiti up there, and that's sad, so please don't be one of those people. Just be respectful. 
take your time, wander around, enjoy yourself. Um, you've been seeing some uh, pictures that uh, we've gathered that we decided to put in this video while we've been doing this last part of this narration. And so look around the canyon and you'll see some indents in the canyon walls where people could have uh, camped. You'll see uh, rock ledges that they could have camped under. Uh, in fact, one of the more prominent ones uh, you'll notice has a lot of black smoke stains on it. So people have been there for many, many years. And so they camped all over that area. So that's the background for Hieroglyph Canyon and a good reason why it would be a good place for you to go and to enjoy a morning or afternoon and be able to get a little more culture and draw a little closer to the Native Americans that lived in this area so many centuries ago and even so many years ago. So we hope you've uh, enjoyed this. Uh, we do have a, a website that we're going to be activating and this story will be in that website along with uh, maps and uh, GPS coordinates to make it a little easier for you to find your way around uh, this particular hike. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly who camped in that area. It could have been the Apaches, it could have been the Navajo, it could have been the Hohokams, and it could have been a mix. They could have been Navajo for a while and then they could have had the Apaches. Just we don't know. And that is yet another mystery of the Superstition Mountains. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. 